Okay, so if you saw my last two videos on design feedback and critique versus criticism, awesome. If you haven't, um, you can pause this and go watch them and then come back. This is part three, sort of. <laughs> this is, this is like I had more to say. So watch those two for context and then come back and continue this video. So I'm just now realizing that it looks like I have snot on my upper lip. That is actually medicated ointment because as you can probably hear, my allergies are really bad today. Uh, I didn't realize that you could see all that on camera. I also promised myself I wouldn't re-record because I did that with my last three videos. This is me. This is real life. Uh, okay, back to the video. As someone whose channel is about creative feedback i thought this would this little series would be helpful one of my missions for this channel is to show how to give a good design feedback critique that is looking at positive and negative but also giving actionable steps and you'll see if you watch my previous videos i talk about that but i believe that design feedback is super underutilized and slash it's not used in the right way so that's what this is. This video is five tips to have a great creative feedback session on Monday. I'm fired up. So number one, in my experience of 13 years of design, eight years professionally, and then I went to school and stuff, but my main, my main tip for you is to go into any design critique, design feedback session without shields. You go in, like for me, like I've gone in so many times and I'm like, I know exactly, like I delivered on this brief. And I don't care what anyone says, like this is the way to go. And then I go in and I am just met with opposition and that doesn't feel great. But I need to remind myself, like in those moments, I remind myself like this isn't an, this is not an interrogation. I need to relax. They're just asking me questions. I don't need to go into fight or flight. I need to remember that they're helping me help them push their mission and values forward for that, for that ad, for that campaign, for that, I don't know, that trade show booth, whatever. And whatever feedback they have for me, is to help me improve. Hopefully by watching my videos, you are able to steer them towards getting the exact information that you need to um, make those edits and move forward. Number one, <laughs> go in without shields. Number two, when they give you feedback, you should write, you should just be writing down everything that they're saying, whether or not you think it's useful. If you're working for a client or if you're in-house working for the marketing director, creative director, whoever, they are the brand holders and they want to help you. For me now, when anyone says something about the brand, I just write it down and that way when I make something else later, I have that context in mind so that I can create something more effective towards their goals. And that goes towards my first branch that I mentioned that when you're designing, you need to be conceptual and a creative problem solver. So. Just write down everything. It might not all be helpful. You can treat it like, what do they call it? You treat it like the, the lunchroom cafeteria, whatever, that you take what you want and leave what you don't, but just take in everything at first, you know, so that you have that context for moving forward. My third point is to let your brain cells soak in all that information because the feedback critique session thing is a lot of information at once you're drinking through a fire hose so you must internalize everything no matter like if the session turns bad or if it is actually good it's just like for me i always leave like feeling like my brain is just so full of information that i need a snack and a nap but i can't because it's like 2 p.m and i still have three hours left of work so just just mention that hey that was a lot of great feedback i just need a minute to synthesize you know and then just let it marinate i feel like neutral energy is not appreciated enough when someone gives me feedback i feel like i need to give information right away even though 
I'm probably not gonna say the right thing. So it is a great reminder to just stop, take a minute, just sit right there, marinate on the information, and then come to a conclusion in the best way. Because as a problem solver, you, you need to think about the creative and the logical. So it's just, it's a lot to think about. They think you can just like pop out creative things like that and that is not the case. So number one is to go in without shields. Number two, take notes on everything. Number three was let your brain cells soak that up. Number four, if you aren't presenting your work, congratulations. Um, it is really a huge energy drain and so for the most part you just get to sit there and soak it up so when someone is presenting who's not you just please say please say thank you please <laughs> just let them know that their work was appreciated like being on the other side of that i've presented so many things and i just sit down and it's crickets and i just feel so awkward and i'm just like i put a week's worth of work into this to move the company forward to get a paycheck no i just want to thank you i think you go it just goes a long way and no matter where you are what you're doing if you're not even in design and you're watching this video somehow thank you <laughs> see i did it just right there but for real like it it just like in in that moment just like a in-person thank you it, it just like lowers my cortisol levels because we've become so transactional like you i need you to make this you make this we're good let's keep moving and then there's no room for appreciation like i'm still a person i'm not a robot <laughs> despite what my logo design professor said um he told us that we were supposed to be logo making machines and i thought that was super wrong and i passed his class i guess but i was just like i do not agree as i cranked out logos again it just goes a long way and then lastly number five after your critique session go get yourself a little treat you earned it you spent a week on making a deck you spent a week maybe i don't know on concepting brainstorming word mapping revisions thumbnails roughs all of those things to get you to that meeting and it was so stressful at least for me i know that they're stressful for me um and so afterwards i just like piece myself out and get a coffee <laughs> so you earned it i i earned it let me know if you get a coffee after your critique sessions or whatever treat that makes you happy you just need it for balance so those are my five tips overall if it does get hairy in there remain calm and respectful you aren't being chased by a pack of wolves physically you're gonna be okay it'll be fine it's only an hour do i do all of these things perfectly no not at all standing in a room while people pick apart your work that you've spent hours of planning prepping creating poured your blood sweat and tears into this project and people are just coming in to just try to find all the bad things <laughs> hopefully some good things it does take a lot of time to get used to honestly you do need a thick skin to get you through this this branch of design feedback this branch will leave you with scrapes and cuts if you're not careful if you don't have tough skin there might be tears i know for me it was very tough and there are a bunch of times where i wanted to quit but look at me now talking talking about how tough it is <laughs> but through all that i have learned the importance of separating myself from my work it's tough it takes a long time to do it and it sucks sometimes but i believe in you it is possible i'm here it's possible and another thing that took me a very long time to learn was that even though i really love designing and creative thinking and problem solving sometimes i just feel really discouraged about it and wonder if i should even still be doing this but that is imposter syndrome just and i just want you to know that if you love design like if you really love it no matter where you're starting out like if you're a student if you are just newly starting design work you're changing your career or whatever if you love it 
there's a seat at the table for you. I know there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of designers who are saying like, if you use Canva, you're not a designer. If you use Blah, you're not a designer. Like. That's not true. There's a seat at the table for you. There's a lot of bad designers out there, but if you want to take the time to listen to feedback and improve your designs, you're going to be awesome. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments if you have any extra tips that I missed. And I would also love to hear what are some good examples of design feedback that you've received over the years? I would love to know. I want, to sh I want to hear the good stuff. Share the good stuff with me. So if you made it this far, thank you so much. I have a little update for you so special. This week was supposed to be a design review video, but last week I had a lot of stuff going on and I am currently dying of allergies and I knew it was going to be a lot of work to make a design review video. Ironically, my design review video is about an allergy supplement, so you can hopefully laugh at the irony with me. So stay tuned for that and until then, I'll see you in the next video.